Good morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to all those who are here and also those who are joining us online. Yeah, I know it's a rainy season, so maybe many cannot come to church. Uh, and also we pray for those affected yeah, with the uh, floods and the flash floods that are happening around uh, uh, Selangor and other places. All right, so, but church is uh, still go on. Uh, we still worship the Lord as usual. So, praise God. So um, those of us who are here, let us all stand. And uh, those who are joining us, let us uh, open our hearts and join our hearts together. Let us pray and uh, commit this time to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We pray that you bless us today as we worship you especially, as we live our hearts. Lord, just bless and speak to us today through your word. Encourage us and build us, we pray. And in, uh, we want to remember those places and people and families those been affected by the floods that happened this uh, past few days. Pray, Lord, that you will protect them. I pray your grace be upon them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We pray that you will, uh, Lord, let your grace uh, just cover them and uh, send help, we pray. Lord, we thank you. Put them in the same place. Lord, uh, especially Philippines also, affected by the typhoon and some uh, places in the U.S. Uh, by the tornadoes. We want to remember them and pray for your mercy and your grace. Lord, in Jesus' name, send help, Lord, in Jesus' name. And bless us today as we worship you and praise your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sing this song, Joy to the World.
speak about his character all his power
Hallowed be thy name, Jehovah God. You reign in this world, in our life. You will never you will change. Never change. trust in you, for you never change. Your love never changed. Your love for us never changed. Your love for this world never changed. That you sent your son, Jesus, your only begotten son, you sent into the world to save us. That those who believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. We thank you. And we thank you for the season of Christmas that we can remember you, our hearts. We can make, Lord, new commitment, new resolution in our life. Love for you. Thank you for this, Lord. Remember the greatest gift of God that he has given us. Jesus, your son. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He will never change. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Merry Christmas in advance to all of us, those who join us through online streaming and also those who, uh, of us here uh, physically. Hallelujah. Good morning to you and Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Now, before we go further into this, uh, this morning's service, yeah, uh, some announcements to make. Uh, as usual, every Friday meeting, prayer meeting, and also Bible studies, teaching, we will have it through Zoom. So those of you who wants to join, please do let us know so that we can send you the link so that you will be able to join us, yeah? And also our Christmas service on the 26th, it will be a combined, a combined service of Bahasa and also English. So do join us through vis, uh, physical, those of us who can join through physical. And to those of us who join live streaming, make sure you don't miss the time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us collect our offering this morning, church. Let us prepare our hearts, giving back to the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Offer back to the Lord our blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Let us, uh, uh, those of us who give through online, yeah, our bank account is on the screen right now. Yeah, hallelujah. God bless you, church, as you give. Before, before that, let us uh, invite uh, Sister Glenn to pray for the offering.
Hallelujah. Let us pray for the offering. Lord, we thank you so much for today. Lord God, we bless your holy name, O oh God. Thank you so much for everything in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning we want to pray for our offering, O oh God. As we give it unto you, O oh God, I pray that you will continue to bless our lives, continue to protect us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, whatever we have, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, income in our life, O oh God, we give it back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the blessings, Lord, that you have given to us, O oh God, Lord God, thank you so much for everything. And Lord, all the offerings and tithes, Lord, uh, your people will give to you, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you continue to bless every family in the mighty name of Jesus. And this offering, oh God, will help to build your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, thank you so much for every hands that gives in the name of Jesus. Do Lord, those who support us, Lord, this ethnos ministry, I pray, oh God, whatever, wherever they are in the name of Jesus, Lord, Bless them and touch them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, church, as you give this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word of God this morning, church? Hallelujah. As, as I mentioned last week, our series in winning the Christian warfare is put on pause, put on hold. We will get back to it by January, so don't uh, miss it out. Yeah, uh, Join this series. Those of you who, who are not able to join previously, do not worry. You can go to YouTube. You can join us from introduction until part uh, seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And because it's se uh, Christmas season, Pastor Carlo will be sharing to us uh, about Christmas. Yeah, Christmas team. Amen. Are we ready for the word of God this morning, church? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us give a hand to Pastor Carlo. Thank you, Shikaina. Praise God. Thank you, everybody, those who are here. Praise God. Um, nowadays, we have, they call this hybrid, yeah? Some people, they are in church, and some people, they are online. So this is what they call hybrid. So we are in the, in a different, uh, what do you call, uh, different time uh, living in this world. So the world changes, and the church also changes. And I, I believe all over the world, and especially here in, Malaysia, I think this is what happening in churches today. But then the worship, we still go on. The word of God is still there. You know, even though you are at home uh, listening to the word of God, if you really put your heart as to worship the Lord and to receive his word, you know, maybe the attitude, we need to work on the attitude in receiving the word and also worship uh, the Lord through uh, online services, uh, sometimes it takes time to adjust ourselves and our attitude because sometimes the difference is from the house and the church, uh, the difference is in the house you are more relaxed, you know, you're, nobody can see you and uh, you can make your coffee, you can have a piece of cake uh, there in front of you while listening to the word, uh, but in church, of course, here we are, we are here. And we cannot do all those things and uh, more or less like we don't have the freedom to, to move around. But your attitude is very, very important to worship the Lord. Because even wherever we are, if our attitude is right in worshiping the Lord, in lifting up our hearts to worship God, I think it's the same. We are pleasing God and we are honoring God. So those of you in the house, those of you who are joining us online through your homes, put your heart, right, direct your heart to the Lord. And this is a time to worship God and especially listening to his word because that is the time to listen to what God is saying. You know, just take it as if that God is speaking to you right now. Hallelujah. Say amen. Uh, that is the preaching time. That is worshiping. We worship God. He is the audience. You know, we give him all the glory and praise. But now in the preaching time, God is speaking to us. We are his audience and he wants a total attention. Pay attention to what God is saying. Because when God speaks, 
you will receive blessing you will receive life you will receive wisdom you will receive guidance you know the power of god is at work through his word come on say amen hallelujah i love to preach like this you know sometimes when we do a series because you need to put on your nose and you know really uh, do some studies and all of that but sometimes when we preach messages like this we just preach from our heart and of course we have some uh, the word of god to guide us here but i love it because we allow the spirit of god just to move in our hearts and speak his word and i believe that god will use the word of god today to speak to us so today i want to speak about uh jesus was sent to bless us jesus was sent to bless us we we go to acts chapter 3 from verse 13 acts chapter 3 from verse 13 last week i shared about the purpose why jesus came and i took from first john chapter 3 verse 8 that uh the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil i mentioned also acts chapter 10:38 that jesus went about doing good and healing all those who are sick you know and those who are oppressed of the devil because god was with him so the purpose why god sent jesus and the reason uh it really gave us a reason why we celebrate christmas we are here to share why god sent jesus why jesus we know that when you talk about jesus of course for the believers for the church they love it they adore they worship jesus they love what god has done for us and for the world say amen we love it we we are excited to celebrate jesus with our family you know we gather together and all of that we celebrate we have a uh, dinner together we have family reunion you know because we want to be together in celebrating christmas together the churches they gather together some in the 24 a uh, 24th evening some in the christmas day 25th evening you know but for us we don't really follow a uh, 24 or 25th but with whichever dates that falls closest to sunday then we do so for the church here we do 26 on sunday next week uh for our christmas service for the church but anyway we celebrate jesus but of course some part of the world or some people of the world they don't like it when you talk about jesus but i want to mention that today because god said in his word that he sent jesus to bless you and i want to share to you what blessing that god has given to us through jesus christ So the purpose why Jesus came you know to give us a reason why we celebrate this day why we celebrate this season the greatest thing that happened in this world the greatest gift that God has given to us Jesus who saved his people from their sins because that is our problem and sin produces that sin produces so many problems in this world and Jesus is the answer whether we like it or not Jesus is the answer I'm on say amen so here in Acts chapter 3 let me read this first sometimes i when i say let's read this then i keep on talking and talking and i forget to read but here in Acts chapter 3 i uh, usually we we read about the account of Jesus word and all that um but every year we read that so i want to uh do a little bit different here today ex chapter 3 from verse 13 this is peter speaking he said the god of abraham and of isaac and of jacob the god of our fathers has glorified his son jesus he was talking about uh, to the jews here the the jews were listening to peter when a miracle happened in chapter 3 a lame man was put you know near the, the the house of god or near the temple so a miracle happened when peter and john uh prayed for him and the people were uh, marveled and they were so amazed about the miracle and they begin to gather together and all the, these jewish people gathered together and peter was 
addressing them. Peter was speaking to them. That's why he said the God of our fathers. Because the Jew, uh, Peter identified with them. Because Peter was a Jew. So he said the God of our fathers. And these Jews who were gathering uh, around them understood what Peter was saying. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You know, usually this message is preached during Good Friday. Um, but I want to do a different thing today. Uh, talking about the birth of Jesus and why Jesus came and why Christmas. Verse 14, but you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know, the lame man that was healed. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet that is the Messiah or Christ shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. 26. Unto you first, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Wow. I, I just, sometimes I imagine uh, the way uh, Peter preached to them. You know, uh, this is after the Pentecost and miracle begin to happen here uh, with this lame man and Peter preached like that. And I, I believe one of the things why pre Peter can preach like this because he was just baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit in the next chapter 2. And now he is filled with this anointing and this power. You know, when he preached, the Holy Spirit put the words together in his heart, in his life to remind him of all the things that God has promised and he was able to address these uh, people, this multitude in front of him, and to tell them about Jesus. You know, Jesus has preached to them. Or in fact, the prophets in the Old Testament has been declaring about God will send a Savior. God will send a Messiah. So when Jesus came in fulfillment of God's word, these people, especially the Jews and their rulers, they did not understand and they begin to persecute. They begin you know, to, to, to do all this persecution to Jesus <clears throat> and they crucified him. They murdered him 
and they buried him. Yet, after that, Jesus raised from the dead. After that, the presence and the power of God is still there. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. Pentecost happened. The apostles preached and they preached Jesus again. When the world thought that they have killed Jesus, Jesus rose again from the dead. When the world thought that they can silence the Son of God, they can silence the prophets, yet a new generation, a new preacher has raised up again and preached that name again. Some people thought when they have, you know, put to silence or erase the name of Jesus that nobody can mention and say Jesus. Then another generation God raised up and preached Jesus again. Ah, hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Jesus keep on living. Jesus keep on speaking. Jesus keep on preaching. God will never stop until the end of the world. God will never stop. God will always have a voice. God will always have a speaker. God will always have a preacher to proclaim salvation, to proclaim God's word because there are still people in this world need to be saved. Say amen. There are still people in this world need his miracle. There are still people in this world need God's intervention in their life. There are still people in this world. There are still generations to come that they need, he, they need to hear the voice of God. They need to hear the word of God. When I was meditating, this word come to me. This verse 26, unto you first. God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. Isn't it wonderful? The Bible speaks about God always wants to do good things in our life. The devil always wants to do bad things, even though he promises, he offers Good things to you. But the end of it, he wants to destroy your life. But God always wants to do good things. Even he sent his son Jesus. He said he sent his son Jesus to bless you. Not only to bless you with wealth, with money, but to bless you. I want to share to you so many blessings in the scripture. In the New Testament alone about 78 blessings that we can you know i don't think we can finish all this if we go through all these things in Ephesians alone there is about 15 or maybe 23 24 blessings from chapter 1 to chapter 3 there's a lot of blessings when you are in christ when you receive christ when you come to jesus christ the blessing that god has promised is for you because he wants good things to happen in your life. He wants this good thing to come into your life. That's why he sent Jesus to bless you. But, but the, the, the next line in this verse, he said he raised up, having raised up his son Jesus, he sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That is the first step. Why Jesus came, why God sent Jesus, why we celebrate Christmas, why we have this season of Christmas every year. Because God wants us to remember the first thing that he sent Jesus Christ into this world so that he will turn every one of us from our sins and iniquities. Because this is the thing that contributes to the problem and the mess in this world. The problem and the mess in our life. Wow. Look at today. All the floods, the flash floods, the typhoons in the Philippines, the tornadoes in U.S. This is just a few examples. Why all these things happen? Because of the sins and iniquities. People the greediness 
selfishness, hatred, all the wickedness, all the evil plans of people. That's why all these things happen in this world. But God said, He sent Jesus to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities, from your sins. You know, actually Christmas in, is an opportunity for us to sit down and think and to ponder and to meditate about our life. And a lot of people, they're looking outside, but actually it's a time for us to look inside. What are the things that we can improve? What are the things that we need to remove from our life? What are the attitudes that we need to change and improve it? You know, maybe the words, the way we say things, the way we think, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we do things, the way we treat our wives, the way we treat our husband, the way we treat our children, the way we treat our parents. It's time to think and to meditate. If we do this every year, every year we will have a change and transformation. Maybe we don't change overnight, but if we do this every year, there will be progress in our change. There will be progress in our transformation. There will be progress in our spiritual growth, in spiritual maturity. There will be progress in our life. But if we just welcome Christmas and just celebrate it and go happy, happy every year and without meditating and without looking into ourselves, what are the things that need to change and improve, then every year will be the same and will never change. Some people, only their head change, become more shiny, <laughs> losing hairs and all of that. All right? Sometimes I cut my hair too short. Then when I look down, read my Bible, I see in my video, I can see, you know, a bit shiny now. <laughs> and I realize I'm not growing young. I'm growing old. But when we grow old, let us grow in the Lord. Not only grow old, but we grow in God. We grow in maturity. We grow in loving our family. We grow in the maturity in the Lord. We grow in our attitude. We grow in our love, in our patience. We grow, hallelujah. We grow in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We grow in the characters that God wants us to develop. We will grow. So every year, take opportunity. Take time to think, meditate. Take time. And this is, this is the process of sanctification. Sanctification is a process. It doesn't mean today you believe in Jesus. Today you say, Jesus, I receive you in my life. Tomorrow you will be godly and you will be holy. No. It is a process. Today you said, Lord Jesus, I repent. I receive you in my life. Lord, I will follow you in my life for the rest of my life. You are saved. You are born again. Maybe you will be baptized. Then tomorrow, God said, let's walk. It took Enoch to walk with God for 300 years. And then the Bible says, God took him. It took him 300 years. Years to walk with God. My question is, how long have you been living? How old are you? Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Then God said, okay, you pass. Let's go. It's a process. Abraham walked with God he went through processes in his life. If you study the life of Abraham, he builds many altars in his life. Not only a place to worship God, not only a place to pray, not only a place where, you know, he remember what God has done in his life, but those altars that Abraham built speaks about a renewal of commitment to God. God, you have brought me this far. I build an altar here. And he walked continually with God. After a, after a certain distance, Abraham built an altar again. 
It's a commitment to God. Every year we make a commitment with God. Lord, thank you for leading me through this year. And before the new year comes, I want to build an altar. I want to make a new commitment. I want to make a new resolution. Lord, I want to make a pledge. I want to make a promise that this is what I want to do next year. This is what I want to achieve next year. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better wife. I want to be a better son. I want to be a better daughter. I want to be a better manager, a better boss. Be a better man. So we will progress in God. Don't waste our time. That every year pass, the next year, we are the same. We are the same. I say people is the same. We are all the same. That's the only way we progress. Yes, maybe you come to church. Yes, maybe you have received Jesus. Yes, maybe you, you have started reading your Bible. Maybe you have started to pray. Maybe you have started to change. But it is a process. It is a walk with God that you have to walk with Him. Sometimes the journey is hard. Sometimes the journey is painful. Sometimes the journey have a lot of disappointments. Sometimes the journey was challenging. God is challenging you to go on and to go extra miles and to sacrifice and to give up some things from your life. It's a journey. And in the journey, we will, ex we will experience many things. We will be hurt. We will be deceived. We will be taken advantage. We experience all of these things. Hallelujah. Even as ministers, even as pastors, we go through the journey. But why we are still here? Because we hold on to God. Even how hard it is. The church is still here. Why? Because we hold on. You know, sometimes uh, I, I talk about this to my wife. I talk about this to Brother Chia also. You know, sometimes we just want to give up. A few months ago, we were thinking about, you know, maybe we just close the church because only a few people in the church and let us just move to my house because we have been doing online church. There's no difference. Uh, in the house, it's better because we have a, a Wi-Fi connection and all. I was a bit worried, but, you know, I sacrifice a bit. I open, uh, get a new uh, Maxis data just for this. And I'll pay 98 ringgit per month. Just for these services in the church. Because we don't have Wi-Fi connection here. We talk about this. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you want to give up. I told the Lord one time, I said, Lord, if, if any church wants to hire me with better salary, maybe I just close down the church and then work with the other church. But we hold on. We trust God, we believe God, and we are still here. So we don't care whether we have many people here or, or a few people here. We just continue. We continue and we just believe God. Because for me, the most important thing is the word being released, the word being delivered. If people don't listen that to this or in this church, they will listen it in the YouTube. They will listen it through online. They will listen it through the Facebook. Sometimes I talk to people, friends and all, and they were telling me, you know, Pastor, thank you. You know, sometimes I listen to your preaching, you know, but I don't see them in my Facebook. But I say, I listen to your preaching. I was so blessed. I have a pastor friend last week when, you know, after the mess, I think, one, two days after that, he commented in my Facebook. He said, I was so blessed, Pastor. I, I love the way you preach because it's so clear. You know, it, it, it's very easy to understand for the intellectual and also for those, you know, uh, uneducated people. I'm blessed. You know, I'm blessed to hear that. So to me, it's the word to be released. Uh, people will be blessed. People will be touched. And they will feel that God is speaking to them. I heard some people, you know, um, telling me, thank you for preaching that way, Pastor. I know some people, they don't like the way I preach. I know too strong for them. But some people were telling me, thank you for preaching that way, Pastor. I, when you preach, I feel God speaking to me personally. Well, I'm blessed with that. 
Praise God. You know, thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for those comments. You know, at least I know that God is using that to bless you, to speak to you. Wow. But that is why we are here. But it's a process. Our life is a process. Yes, you believe in God. You believe in Christ. You have repented. You have received him. You have decided to follow him. That is good. That is the first step. That is the first thing to do. But now God is saying to you, let's walk. Walk with me. Continue to walk with me. When Abraham, he was journeying, Genesis 15, Genesis 17, God spoke to Abraham. When Abraham followed God's will in his life, God appeared to Abraham and said, Abraham, I am God Almighty. He said, walk before me, blameless. God wants you to walk with him. Second Chronicles 15, God sent his prophet to King Asa. And he told Asa, he said, the Lord said to you, Asa, King Asa, I am with you when you are with me. God wants us to walk with him. The Bible says Noah found grace in Genesis 6. Noah found grace because he walked with God. God wants you to walk with him. You don't have to be a holy, holy person to walk with God. God knows you mess up. God knows your situation. God knows you are sinful. God knows you are still have these bad habits in your life. God, still, God knows that you have these weaknesses in your life. But God said, walk with me. Many people say, I don't want to walk with God. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be faithful in the church because I'm still a sinner. Well, that's the reason why the church is there. Because the church is for the sinners. You say, I don't want to walk with God. I don't want to be faithful with Jesus. I feel ashamed. I feel embarrassed. Well, that is why Jesus came. He called sinners to repentance. Come to Jesus. Receive him. In your life. Then this season of Christmas will be a meaningful Christmas to you. So he said here, unto you first. God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. And turning away every one of you from his sin. It's almost like the same uh, tone in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. When the angel told Mary and Joseph that the son that will be born, his name will be Emmanuel. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. You know the problem, our problem is sin. Why we have all this problem in our life is because of sin. Sin produces death. That all this belongs to death. Problem. All this family breakdown, relationship breakdown, attitude problem, wickedness, all these sinful thoughts and everything. Why we are messed up is because of this sin that produces death in our life. And the answer is Jesus. That's why he sent Jesus into this world. He said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. When the disciples of John the Baptist were following Jesus from a distance, Jesus turned to them. What do you want? He said, John the Baptist introduced us to you. Then John the Baptist said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He always emphasized that. Why Jesus? Because of the sin that is here in this world. Why you need Jesus is because of sin. We cannot set ourselves free. Repentance is the key. Repentance is the beginning. That's why he said he sent Jesus to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. It needs repentance. Repentance is the answer. 
If you need breakthrough, repent. If you need healing, repent. If you need to be blessed, repent. If you need to prosper, repent. If you need to be holy and godly and mature, you need to live in repentance. Repentance, repentance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God. Jesus speak to the church in Ephesus. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. He told them, he said, remember where have you fallen? Because they have left their first love. That is Jesus Christ. He said, repent. And do the first work. That is return to your first love. Return to your first love. Jesus is the blessing. There is no other way. There is no other way. Maybe, you know, temporarily or briefly we can, you know, be happy of ourselves. You know, sometimes money can bring happiness, but it's not forever. You know, maybe sometimes things in our life can bring, you know, a short happiness, but it's not forever. But Jesus brings the answer. Jesus can give you life. Jesus can give you peace. In John chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible says the devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he said, Jesus said, I am come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. The word abundantly there is superabounding. Superabounding. You are loaded. God wants to load you with all this abundance of life. Just imagine the life that God wants you to have. Sometimes people, you know, they try their best to, to, to do something about this situation. But you cannot. Human ability cannot give you that. Human wisdom cannot give you that. Even the expert counselor, even the expert psychiatrist, even the expert economist, whatever, they cannot give you that. God must penetrate your life. The love of God and the power of God must invade your life, must bring change, must bring transformation. Then he begins to unveil and open your eyes. Then you begin to see, wow, this is the life that I want to have and only God can give it to me. Amen. Amazing. What God planned for us. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Many people know this word. God said, for I know the thoughts that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. It's a good plan. It's not to harm you, but to bless you, he says. That is what God's thought about you. This is how God thinks. This is how God plan for you. His plan is to prosper you. His plan is to make you good. His plan is for you to have a good life. That's why Jesus said, I come so that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. But if you want to live your own, you want to do it according to your own wisdom, you want to do it with your own effort and ability, you will be disappointed all the time. Cannot. Long time ago, I have raised my hands to Jesus. I said, Lord, I surrender. Now you lead me. You are my shepherd. You lead me. My life belongs to you. You are my pilot. You are my driver. You are the one. You are my captain. You are the one that will sail this boat. You are the one that will fly this plane. You are the one that will drive this car. Lord, I just follow you. And that God proved it. All these years, he leads us. All these years, he guides us. A lot of problems we face. But we realize that when God is with you, he will make it easy for you. Come on, say amen. Yeah. The life that God wants to give us. Wonderful life. Wonderful life. 
I want to mention a bit blessing here in Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 4, we are blessed, been chosen before the foundation of the world. Means before God has created this world, He has chosen you. But that chose, choosing that God chose you did not happen until you receive Christ and you be in Christ. Yes, God loves you. God loves the world. He loves you. But that love of God, you will not experience and you will not receive until you are in Christ, until you receive Christ. Many Christians today say, we live under the grace of God. Yes, you are correct. But the grace of God will not work. The grace of God will not uh, you know, experience in your life until you receive Christ and until you are in Christ. There is a difference when a Christian in the church and a Christian in Christ. Many Christians in the church, but they are not in Christ. That's the difference. Believe me, in this Christmas day, many Christians will be in church. But they don't have Christ. Many can, Christians can sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. And they can greet Merry Christmas to one another. But that is not in Christ. Make sure that this Christmas you receive Christ. So that you will be in Christ. So that the grace of God will come in your life. Then you will say, I was chosen by God before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Many people believe in predestination, but they believe it wrongly. And they understood and they accept it wrongly. Because they said, when we are in sin, we have been predestinated. I am a Christian. So I am predestinate, predestinated. So if I do sin, if I fall into sin, then God still love me and I am still saved no matter what will happen to me because I am predestinated. They call this the predestination doctrine. But that is wrong understanding. You will fulfill God's predestination in your life when you have come to Jesus and be in Christ. And that predestination will apply and work in your life if you abide in Christ. In living godly, in living holy, in protecting your life from this world and sin. So that you will not lose your predestination. But many Christians believe that when you know, I can womanize, I can be a drunkard, I can commit sin, and nothing will happen to me. Heaven is still my destination because I was predestined. No, that is a wrong understanding. You have been chosen before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 verse 4, he said, holy and blameless. That's a blessing. And we have been put in his love, verse 4. Verse 5, we have been predestined to adoption. Adoption, not because we have no parents and you are an orphan, but adoption means God make you to become sons and daughters. Or son plays. You have been placed as a son because of Jesus. God did not adopt. In heaven, there is no, what do you call this, adopted children of God. In heaven, they are only children of God. No adopted children. We have been accepted in the beloved. Verse 6. We have been redeemed through his blood. Verse 7. We have been forgiven of our sins. Verse 7. Ephesians 1. Riches of his grace abound to you. In verse 7 and 8. He made known to us the mystery of his will. Verse 9. We obtain an in eternal inheritance, verse 11. We hear, heard the word of truth, verse 13. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, 
Verse 13. We know the hope of his calling. Verse 18. We are the riches of God's inheritance. Verse 18. We know and experience the exceeding greatness of his power toward us. In verse 19 and 20. Ephesians alone listed many blessings. Where in Acts chapter 3, verse 26, he said, He sent Jesus to bless us in turning away every one of us from our iniquity. And this is all the blessings that he has given us in Ephesians alone. Some part of the New Testament, we receive blessing of eternal life. John 3, 15, 16. Blessing of eternal life. Eternal life is a blessing when you have Christ in you. You cannot save yourself. Nobody can put himself in heaven. Nobody can receive salvation. Nobody can save himself by doing good things. You cannot say to God, God, I am a good person in the world. I have, I have helped many people in the world. I must come to heaven. God said, no, your good works is not accepted here in heaven. Because only Jesus can save you. Our passport to heaven is Jesus, not our good works. Hallelujah. Nobody can go to heaven without Jesus. Like today, nobody can go to supermarket without vaccine. Jesus is our vaccine for heaven. No, I don't care whether first dose, third dose, second dose, or third dose. But as long as you have Jesus, you will be accepted in heaven. Just imagine this. If in this world, you cannot go to supermarket, you cannot fly without vaccination. Hey, come on. Why heaven? No rules and condition. There is a condition. Jesus, you must have. Hallelujah. Eternal life is a gift. And only in Jesus. Forgiveness of sin. I mentioned that. Reconciliation to God. Is through Jesus. You cannot say God. You know let us make peace. God said there must be a mediator. Between man and God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Justification. Means declared righteous through Jesus. When you have Jesus, God declared you righteous. God declared you justified because of Jesus. No condemnation. Romans 8, 8, 1. Many people today, even Christian, they live in condemnation. Just listen to them when they pray. You know that they have condemnation. You know that they, they are living in guilt. They are living in condemnation. Just listen to the way they pray. But when a Christian begin to pray, begin with praise, begin with thanksgiving, begin, begin with loving God, begin thanking God, then you know that person, he knows God. He experienced salvation, forgiveness of sin and all. But those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You don't walk around with this feeling condemned and feeling guilt because God has justified you. God has set you free. Redemption, spiritual refreshment, victory. Nobody can say, I am victorious if Jesus is not in his life. How can you win against sin? How can you win against Satan? How can you win against demonic forces? And live in victory is through Jesus. Because God said, I sent Jesus to you to bless you. We have the Holy Spirit. We have fellowship with God. You cannot have fellowship with God without Jesus. Why we have fellowship with God? We are good friends with God because of Jesus. Jesus said, I have not called you servants, but I have called you friends. We have fellowship with God. We have spiritual power. We have cure of anxiety. Many people, when they have anxiety, they look for psychiatrists and all of that. But you know, when Jesus is in your life, 
He will heal you from anxiety. He will set you free. The Bible says we have been more than conquerors. That is a blessing. Peace with God. Peace of God. Peace with believers. Overcoming the world. Protection from Satan. Oh, hallelujah. Ability to overcome sin. Ability to do God's will. Spiritual power. Freedom from sin. Freedom from the law. Spiritual rest in Christ. Many Christians, they labor. Many Christians, they sweat. Many Christians, you know, that's why they have a lot of anxiety in all of that. They have not found rest in Christ. We have future rest in heaven. We have reward in heaven. We have God's word. And we have the new covenant. All of these things. You know, I, I just don't have time to read all these scriptures to you. All these statements that I mentioned to you have a scripture on it. I don't have time. There's so many of them. Church, why Christmas? It to remind us that God sent Jesus to us to bless us with a life that he has designed for us. Not the life that you, you want. Not the life that you try to live. Some people, they try to get life. But it's hard. It's impossible without God giving it to you. This Christmas, let us hear the word of God. That God raised up Jesus. Sent him to bless you. In turning away every one of you from your iniquities. If you don't remember all my preaching today, remember Acts chapter 3 verse 26. Read it again and again this week. For this one week, read it again and again. Read it again and again. God having raised of his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. If this thing happened to you, then I am confident and sure that next year, you will be a different man and woman. Let's pray. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. Lord, we thank you for this word. That God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless us and to turn every one of us from our iniquity. What a wonderful word. What a timely message for us. We want to receive this. We embrace this because we want a miracle to happen in our life. And we pray that you will lead us that next year we will become a person that you want us to be. Lord, thank you so much for this. Seal your word. Seal your word in our hearts. This Christmas, we want to say that we welcome Jesus in our hearts. We welcome Jesus in our family. We welcome Jesus in our life. This Christmas, we will not celebrate Christmas without Jesus. We want Jesus to be in our Christmas. We thank you, Father. We bless you. Today, we give you all the glory and praise. And thank you for your power and thank you for your word. Bless your people and bless us throughout this week. And as we come to celebrate Christmas next week, speak to us again, we pray. We bless you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Everybody say amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Have a great week. Amen.